Ooh. Oh. Hello there, individual. Hello. Hello there, and how are you today? Hello, oh, very good. Yourself? Quite good. As you can see, I'm having a little bit of fun here in my little AR world. Let's tidy it up a little bit hello. so that way I can get started. Well, hello there, Nick. How's it going? We're well, pretty good. How are you? <laughs> I'm having a good time, although it is a little bit late. Some people would be in bed by now. Oh, yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> but da -da -da, da -da 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 -da. So let's start with the original presentation. James, if you would please go back into PowerPoint mode so that way we can get started for all these lovely people. All right, come on. Let's get this party started. Hi, son. <laughs> Hello. Wow. Hello. <laughs> Good and to see you. I know everybody in this chat. Yeah, hey. I know. Oh, hey. Faces. Hey, I feel like a little bit of a celebrity at the moment. All right, so I'm hoping by now everybody is seeing the PowerPoint presentation. We're seeing something like what's SG. Exactly. Uh, that's a PowerPoint presentation. Yep. Yes. yes. Excellent. So let's start with what is SG. So simply put, SG aims to combine any ARHMD that's tethered, combine it with a low level renderer, as in a renderer that runs specifically outside of a game engine, along with a low level tracker API, in my case, the in Stereo Lab Z, but we also work with the Intel T265 and combine this with mirror networking in order to enable co-located experiences, all together wrapped into a nice neat little package that's consumed either by the Unity game engine or the Unreal game engine, which is coming soon. So moving on from there, so we started with what is ESCII? Now let's move on to how ESCII? So let's go with the setup. By setting up, we mean, first thing, we need to calculate the HMD's distortion. So, of course, any lens distortion system will, of course, not be able to render straight lines without this distortion. In our case, we use a simplified structured light homography mapping system in order to calculate the uh, distortion of the lenses, which projects the view into the real world. Combine this with a calculation of between sensors. Uh, alignment. So what I mean by this case, in my case, I've got a six degree freedom head tracker and elite motion hand tracker. We need to know where they sit relative to the user's head. For this, we've got two methods. The first of which is a quick interactive hand alignment process, which is done online, or an offline uh, fiducial marker tracker, which allows us to compute the between device uh, poses. So let's move on to phase two, like how esky with the development. So you can see that lovely fighting pose picture of myself. So essentially, esky does all the work for you in regards to making a mixed reality experience. So it comes with pre-configured rigs, which enables you to quickly drag and drop this kind of content into the scene. And it's got an out-of-the-box mixed reality toolkit integration. This is very important, and I'll explain why in a short bit. But basically, the scripts are automatically configured to highlight the tracker, the hand tracking, and the rig center, which we mark as our ESCII origin for the head mount to display. We also have ESCII origin set up for our left hand and our right hand. Now, if you're looking more into how to specifically develop with the SKI SDK, you've got two options. You can play with the SDK yourself, or this weekend, I'm giving a Global XR talk, and I'll work through the SKI SDK and develop an application with you so you can understand this. Now, the question here is, why SKI? So, of course, uh, one second, clear meshes. So, why SKI? So, any HMD can be used with SKI as long as it's tethered. Additionally, we have hand interactions. So right now, I've been giving this entire presentation via my little AR window viewer. We have spatial mapping with the Z, and I'll demonstrate this in a short moment. We also have six degree of freedom head tracking, which is given by either the Z tracker that we have or the T265 built into it. We also have a complete integration with the MRTK. What this means is that by developing for ESCII, ESCII is enabled for not only the North Star, but also you write the same code and can deploy to OpenVR, the HoloLens or HoloLens 2, or the Meta 2. 
What this means is that we can significantly rapidly develop any mixed reality experience of our choosing. And I really highlight this because the demonstrations you're about to see were all developed within the time span of a single day. I also have several other submissions that are being presented at ISMAD that were developed in five days for the short single user experiences and uh, within a month for this very nice co-located multiplayer AR experience. And the real kicker to that is that this was developed entirely by undergraduate students who have never worked in mixed reality before. So, of course, I love memes. My applications are many, so this is where I start showing you. Let's go back into our little uh, AR scene view. So, I'll close this off away. And let's get playing with some content. So, of course, I've got this very nice engine here. Fun fact, I actually like cars. I've been I'm in the process of building a drift car at the moment. And the purpose behind this is for me to really understand what's going on within my engine. So, I decided to quickly make an app to render my engine in AR. Now, the nice thing about this is the interactions afforded by the kit will allow me to enable or disable transparency to really see what's going on on the inside of the engine. So we can see that the pistons are moving around, for example. And, of course, we have our famous little piano scene from the video, which I love to open up with. So let's bring this a little bit higher up, so that way I'm not kneeling. Obviously, I never took piano lessons. How about this little hand globe here? Of course, this is part of the MRTK, but it's still pretty neat to be able to see this running on a North Star HMD with high fidelity. But, of course, this is all standard. Anybody can do this. What you're here for is the lovely spatial mapping. So, spatial mapping over here. What about spatial mapping over there? Uh, how about spatial mapping over there? Or over there? As you can see, I'm building a live reconstruction of my environment. So I'm going to stop this uh, experience right now. Give one more verification of the world around me. Maybe reach over and grab that cup of coffee while I'm at it, because it's been a long day. <laughs> and I'll clear my meshes, tidy up my scene a little bit, open up the window, so that way you all can chime in and give me many questions. Wonderful, love your demo. Yeah, very, very effective. I find. <laughs> yeah. Very cute. Yeah, it's a really it's... cool demo. Um, so remind me again. So how are you doing the? I see that there are markers on the table. Are you using those for tracking, or are nope. they just left? Zero, zero markers. What you're seeing is basically right. many students use this area. I've kind of kicked them out right. for the purpose of this demonstration. <laughs> <laughs> so they didn't have the chance to clear out. Right, right. Okay, I was wondering about that because you didn't say anything about the markers. Yep, so what I'm using is a uh, six degree of freedom inside out tracker that's attached to my Project North Star kit mm -hmm. and calibrated. Right. So what you're seeing on you my... Mentioned, you mentioned... Uh, so, so, sorry, go ahead. No, 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 go ahead. Well, I was wondering, you, you mentioned uh, calibration and setup and everything uh, in the beginning. Like, how, how, how often do you have to, like, recalibrate? Like, how, how robust and stable is the, is the calibration and registration? I'm just trying to get a sense for it because there are off, off, obviously trade-offs quite often. But, uh... Once. Once. Simple as that. Unless you somehow rip off the trackers from the headset, this calibration only occurs once. And that also only if you change your setup, right? You, Pretty like much. If you turn it on and off, like that is that 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 registration remains robust, right? Pretty much. So yeah. the usual workflow of such an experience, I'm going to break my system a little bit and hope to gosh that it actually works. So right now, I've actually enabled so uh, a specific localization within Esky. So Esky allows me to place content in the scene and then be able to save this as an Esky map which I have saved, so now I'm going to completely break this system. So let's click Load Map. Now, you can see I'm walking around, and the scene itself has frozen. But now, with any luck, once the relocalization occurs, the content should be placed back into the environment perfectly. 
So this relocalization is built in as a part of ESCII and is done very simply to take all of the strain of developing such a thing away from the user and allow the user to make the applications themselves. That's pretty impressive. It's um, and so you're obviously now now you're manipulating virtual sliders and virtual buttons. Um, and whenever I interact with an AR or VR system, I always find it quite fatiguing to sort of have it midair and no feedback and no no like physical contact. Like, are you thinking about giving uh, like some form of feedback? Um, Funny, you should or... say that. Let's go with one of the demonstrations at ISMA and enable this now. So I actually have used this system quite a lot. I wear my backpack PC and headset almost every day. And the one thing that ticked me off the most is <laughs> whenever I interact with a virtual object, I can't tell if I've actually pressed it. So introducing Visio Touch. So you're seeing on my display now that there's a glowing finger that kind of acts like the real physical finger to give me the semblance of haptic feedback without actually giving me haptic feedback. <laughs> yeah, that's clever, yeah, that's good. So the, <laughs> the real emphasis here is that this entire application was conceived, developed, and recorded within a total three days. That's how rapid development with ESCII is. Uh, can I, uh, I, I wonder uh, how about the multiplayer support uh, from your framework? So how, how easy to develop something yeah, with multi-users? Okay, so I am hoping when I go to click connect, someone else is playing the game. But let's see what happens. Let's close the window. Let's connect. And with any luck... I'm hoping that the server is not down at the moment because that would be bad. So, okay, to start with, you see that little sphere on the ground? Yeah. So this is what we call an ESCII origin, very akin to the HoloLens's um, anchors. So the mm. ESCII code includes an out-of-the-box example of co-localization between devices. So you could quickly drag and drop and create this co-located experience. Now, what should be happening as I click connect and it's not happening, sadly, the server might be down, but we actually have a full-blown co-located experience called Rock and Bot Boxing, which we'll be demonstrating at, at ISMA, and it involves basically two users standing two meters apart, throwing virtual punches at each other over that distance. All oh, right. I thought you were gonna heal that one. No, we don't get to see that one. No, sadly not today because it seems not only is my server not running, but I'm looking over at the data and it looks like the server is down and nobody's playing it. Sadly, but you can easily okay. you can easily grab the game. I've linked it within the chat. So that way you can play the game yourself. Now remember, the game itself was developed by a bunch of undergrads within a time span of a few weeks. Hmm. Wow, well, really cool. I think yeah. it's really yeah. work. I yeah, really, really like to see that. Yeah, it's, a, it's great work. And also the, the kind of framing around toolkits. I was wondering, I mean, I'm, I've worked on a few toolkits my, my, myself in the past. What, 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 what's your idea or your kind of plans to uh, ideally like keep up uh, momentum there? Like maybe, so, I don't know, establishing like a developer community around it and everything that's associated with it. Because I find that one of the trickiest part to kind of break out of that, uh, that, uh, that first kind of shell, if you will, of, uh, of delivering a toolkit, which is already an amazing, uh, uh, amazing level to achieve. But I'm just wondering, did you already think about it? Like, like how, like if you projected three or five years in the future, uh, is, are, there, are there good strategies of how we can establish such a community, even if small, right? So right now there's actually a massive Project North Star community that hasn't had an out of the box solution to work with the North Star headset up until now. Now this community is very big already. I'm hoping essentially anybody that's got a uh, Project North Star headset can essentially strap a six degree of freedom tracker and use ESCII out of the box. But there's many features in Complete with it ESCII that afford it that very high quality experience. For example, stabilization. The low level renderer will allow us to make this essentially. Um, as for my plan for the next five years, essentially, this toolkit, I'm going to be perfectly honest, 
was selfishly developed so that way I can make many cool demos like this very quickly. <laughs> but, of course, this potato that I've built is very useful for everyone. So by open sourcing this code to the entire community, I can get everyone on board with Esky and we can make AR much more achievable and approachable to everyone, developers, industry, hobbyists. So as we all know, the whole lens is very expensive in comparison, even though it achieves this very high quality. I want to be able to give this high quality to the end user or the hobbyist developer that's just getting introduced. It's great. I, uh, I also love your honesty. I mean, that's, that's an important part of developing a toolkit is essentially elevating ourselves first to a level where we can quickly explore uh, lots of scenarios. That's, that's absolutely true. And, and you're right. I mean, there is uh, like through open sourcing and in particular piggybacking on like part of existing communities. I mean, that's what I took away also from what you said, right? If there's a particular need also of a part of a community that can also benefit from uh, uh, from from making a, a toolkit contribution stronger right uh, in particular in, in the sense of not necessarily in the, in the um, um, academic scope I mean obviously that's ideal if people pick it up there but also beyond right and I uh, I like that you have some uh, some ideas of how to do that yeah yeah, Brilliant so work. I Love really, it. I really want to push Esky as one of the primary standard toolkits for quickly making mixed develop uh, mixed reality applications. So anybody that's known me for the last few years knows what my PhD project was about. It essentially was turning a university campus into a big video game. What I'm hoping is to re-implement my PhD thesis into Project Esky so that we can enable this very large scale collaborative experiences out of the box. That's a very good point, yeah. Uh, 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 one, one quick last question, and then I'll stop talking because uh, Frederick and Son probably want to ask as well, but um, for uh, w what's your take on providing examples with a toolkit? Because I had a conversation about that with, uh, with Andy Wilson a while ago, and when we were talking about the Room Alive toolkit, uh, which he built, and the idea there essentially that he, uh, and, and, and I'm just rephrasing what, what he essentially said, but he said, not to provide these kind of uh, uh, low-level uh, entry um, uh, demos, the kind of things you click and it, it, it's running immediately, because the problem is then you see lots of clones of that, right? You see lots of people picking it up, just using that, making tiny modifications, and that's it. So he purposefully uh, put the threshold a little bit higher of things you have to combine to make it work uh, to actually like, in a way, I guess, better target of uh, what he saw as the main users of the toolkit. What's your take on, the, uh, on that point? Because for many toolkits I published in the past, we, we uh, contributed lots of these like hello world examples. But I was curious of what you think about where to find the right balance there. So basically, it's, in it's an interesting point. The first thing is I'd like to provide at least a hello world example for each feature of Esky, how to start the localization process, how to save a map, how to author the scene, how to do the multiplayer experiences. So there's going to be demonstrations that showcase each part of this, including the mixed reality token implementation. However, what I'm also aiming to do is a complete documentation set. Now, I've been very lazy and haven't written it up yet, but within the next month online, there will be a complete you know, documentation series that shows not only how to work with Esky, but the general concepts of mixed reality, and how to work with mixed reality transformation, scene graphs, localization. So my opinion of this series, simply put, is provide an example for the dumbest of users. However, don't provide them too much and allow them to approach help from the community. So we actually have a Discord channel open specifically for Project Esky. So those that are trying for the first time, don't know how it works, can quickly hit me up for any information that they may have. That's a really good plan, yeah. Again, lovely, lovely work uh, and, and lovely demo. The way you presented and you kind of dive from your presentation into the live demo mode was uh, was really well done. Um, great work. So you can't All see right, this, I'll, but I've got a I'll smile on my face. I some other demos, but uh, it was uh, was lovely to see your demo. So thanks again. It was, uh, yeah, <laughs> was thank an amazing you. experience. Thank, thank you very much. You take care. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we have plenty of time for questions for other people, so if you want to chime in at any point, just 